Hello, this is part 14 of heat load calculation. We're working on the Valtilo house, moving it from Texas Gulf Coast town to Birmingham, Alabama. This is, like I said, this is found in section 7 of your book. Uh, so you have this example in there. Uh, where we left off, we was going to do the subtotal for line 14 down here. So at line 14, basically, you got your heat and BTU per hour. You just add this entire column up all the way down to 14. You can see right there they got 19,682. Uh, and then you do your cooling all the way down through here and add them all up, all the way down here to your subtotal. Please take your time. Make sure you get everything right. If you have a calculator, if it has, you know, where it gives you a, a tab on, you know, uh, what numbers you actually punched in to double check these numbers, please make sure you do that. Like I said, because we want to make sure we're, we want to make sure we're trying to be as accurate as possible on these uh, calculations. So on our example, go to the Birmingham house, and you see I have it totaled up. So totaled up to our point right now, we got twenty-two thousand eight hundred fifty-five point one two two for the sensible heating, and you got twelve thousand five hundred twenty-five point seven nine seven six nine. For the sensible cooling. So everything up here, when we finally get down here to line 20, this will be your sensible heating, sensible cooling, and then we'll have our latent load. Latent load deals with any type of moisture. Uh, this just deals with you know heating and cooling, raising temperature, dry bulb uh, typically. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to our duct loss, duct gain. Like I said, this is going to be a multi-part right here because it has a lot of different facets to it. So I'm going to try and break it down so the videos aren't as long. So let's take a look at the house first and see what we got. So this is the blueprint, I'm going back to the survey blueprint, and we're looking at duct loss, and gain, and unconditioned spaces. Your main information is going to be found here on the blueprint. Uh, it has average supply branch diameter, average branch length, branch area, number of support branches, total branch area, square footage, average uh, support trunk line, uh, I'm sorry, supply trunk line in feet, uh, approximate supply, total supply trunk, and then total supply side square footage. So these numbers up here, these are gonna be your supply, and then down here is your return. <clears throat> the actual physical information on it is found up here in the left-hand corner. Uh, it's a single zone air uh, air source heat pump. Uh, it is all electric, uh, no deduct for heater blower, so we don't know what it is. Uh, so there's a default for that, and we'll, we'll come to these two in a minute. Uh, this part right here, though, it tells you the main parts of it. Like I said, supply in the center of the rooms, one return close to the air handler, uh, not sealed. It, uh, in other words, this old mechanical duct It's just bent together. It doesn't have any sealer or tape on it. Uh, R4 wall insulation, so all these trunks and runs have R4 insulation inside of it. And they also want checked sealed with R8. <coughs> so in other words, <coughs> if we wrap the ductwork and seal it up, how much will this help our infiltration? Uh, so let's start looking at what they actually got. So we know it's up in the attic, and we know we're going to be dealing with uh, some ductwork up in there. And some of these numbers I found in the book are incorrect, like the 7B-AE. It is not 7B-AE, it's actually 7A-AE. Uh, so for duct losses, their construction number, they have, this is the table from the construction number, this is the insulation of it, this is the actual leakage. And with duct surface area adjustment. So, and here's your factors on supply and return. And this is what they got for the total BTUs that they're uh, having to add to it because of the leakage to it. So you're looking at 9,000 here, 9,000 on this side. So on the heating and cooling, that 9,000, you know, that's uh, 6,000 is a half ton. So if we just seal this stuff up and insulate a little bit better, we can actually help that. And that's why we're gonna do two parts to this. Um, everything else down through here, we'll finish it up and we'll finish up this part right here and then uh, go on to the next video where you actually size a piece of equipment based upon these numbers. 
But for right now, we're going to probably have to break this into a couple parts because there's many different tables on here. <clears throat> so looking at their worksheet G, this is what you get. You got two sides. One side over here. This will be all the calculations based on what is currently installed. In other words, the R4 with the leakage, it's an average leaking home or it's it's leaking. It's been, this is super bad right here. No no type of seal or anything on it. So all this that they calculate up, this is what we're going to actually end up transferring over to our uh, J1AE right down here at the base of it. But we're going to break this down into parts. You see it has a couple different parts here. It has R value, width, leakage rate, LCF, surface area adjustment. This is dealing with, you know, is your ductwork bigger or smaller based upon the numbers that we get. And finally, adding it all up and transferring it over. But you have two here. And it's not really hard to do this at the same time. Like I said, you can do a lot of your calculations at the same time. This side over here is, how did you fix it? Well, they wanted us to check it with R8 and sealed up. So we're gonna put it back to an average leaking tightness from a very leaking set of dough work just to see the kind of improvements on the BTU gains that we actually get off of. And this can be actually a selling point to your customers. <clears throat> Most of the information up here, like I said, these are going to be your tables. Table 7 will be where your ductwork is. And that can be 7A, B, and I believe there's a C. Uh, heating, like I said, the square footage, this is going to be your survey right here. And these, these right here are going to be the worksheet A, table 1A values. Like I said, you can get all these from uh, worksheet A. We'll actually look at our worksheet A and pull these numbers and everything. But we're going to start working first with the corrected. We're just going to show you how to do the corrected and show you how to do some of these numbers because if you do look at some of these numbers and you look at some of the tables, it doesn't exactly add up. It's like, well, that's not the number that the table had. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you what they actually did on some of these tables. So let's just get started and we'll get to the first table and we can start working our way down through there. So we're going to go to our... Valtivo Worksheet E, and of course we already know our table that we're going to use because we've pulled it up and looked at what we got. Now they're considering this a regular spider return in the attic. So we've got the return up in the attic, so because it meets all of these standards right here, this is the one we're actually going to use right here. And because it's the same one they use. So we're just going to kind of just keep it on track and everything else. I know in the video, I mean in the, the survey picture, it looks like a trunk work type system. But we're just going to do it the way they did it, so that way we have that consistency and we have something to go back and forth against. <clears throat> so our first construction number is going to be this one right here. So this is going to go right there. Let me see if I can slide this a little bit so I can get both of them in the picture. So 7A-AE. Okay, that's your construction number. Square footage. How big was our house? Like I said, if we go to our blueprint, I'm just going to close this and go back to the blueprint real quick. Our blueprint is 40 by 30 for 1,200 square foot. <clears throat> now, since we're heating and cooling the same amount of area, both of these numbers right here are going to be 1,200. Okay, next we're going to have to go to our worksheet. A or Table 1. I'm just going to bring up Table 1A. Here we have Birmingham Municipal Airport. If you keep seeing Birmingham AP on the, all the top of my papers and everything, this is where it's actually coming from. Okay, so looking at these numbers, you have these numbers right here. The heating 99% dry bulb. Well, like I said, after a 30 year, they calculated the temperature and 99% of the time it was 24 degrees or warmer. Over here is the 1%. Out of 30 years, only 1% of the time was it actually higher than 93 degrees. Now, 1% over 30 years per year, that's three days. So 
you know, just running these numbers. And of course, the other important number we're going to need here is we're doing 50% relative humidity indoors, so that's 39 design grains. So 24 or 99. Let's bring it up. 99 is 24. Or 1% is 93 right here. And our grains differential is 39. Okay, so we got our top part filled out now. We're ready to start working our way down through here. Get rid of that. Okay, this first part right here basically is construction information. Like I said, what was our construction information? And we can bring up their worksheet G to compare it to and everything. And like I said, it was R4. Just like on the survey, our insulation was R4 for this side. And we're going to do the adjusted or improved construction. If we fixed it, we put R8, we'd wrap it. Uh, leakage on this side, as you can see, pretty leaking. Like I said, 0 0.35, 0 0.70. So let's put those numbers in here. Let's see if we can get these side by side a little bit better here. 0 0.35. Slash 0 0.70. And that's supply and return leakage right there. Okay, on our new construction, if we sealed it up really good, we'd end up with 12 and 24. So 12 and 24 can go over here. Okay, <clears throat> and this is what I'm saying you can work this side and this side and work your way down through here if you want to. Or if you wanted to, you could calculate this entire side over here, get down to the bottom, and then come over here and do this entire side over here. But you're gonna find a lot of these numbers that you have on both sides are off the charts. They're, they're gonna be the same numbers. So it kinda, kinda helps me speed-wise doing these heat load calculations to go ahead and do both sides. And we can kinda show a comparison right here. Here you go, like I said, on this base case factors from the table and everything, you see they got 0 0.078 right there, 0 0.078 right there. In other words, your base case information on both of these are gonna be pretty much identical. It's when we start moving in the calculation factors, like I said, this one's sealed up and has better insulation, you can see how the numbers change. Heat loss, 1.39 down to 0 0.86, and so on and so on all the way down through here. But some information, like a lot of this information down here in this part right here, a lot of it's going to be identical. It's going to be the same number. So it really doesn't take a whole lot to transpose some of these numbers over and move down through here. It's just some of these are going to take corrections and uh, factors in. Okay. So let's just work way down through this. Now we have lines over here again. So we're moving from left to right. Left to right. We're going to be moving down through here. And we're going to run into special things where they tell us what to do in the middle of it. But it means do the same on this one as you do on this one here. Okay. So let's look at the uh, table 7AE and make an explanation of some of it. So I'm going to bring up the uncorrected. This is all my information that I have on this for the uncorrected. And we're going to start looking at the top up here. So this is for Birmingham, Alabama duct lossage. And this is, like I said, this is table 1A right here. This is where you pull this information from. <clears throat> There's our 99%, 24 degrees, our 1%, 93 degrees, and our design grains, 39. If you look at the numbers that they get on some of these, like we're going to use their example first. Let's look at what they got. So they got 0 0.78. Okay, they got that. Now, this is a 1,200 square foot home. So it's not 1,000 square foot and it's not 1,500 square foot. Okay. So like a lot of tables, like I said, if it was 1,200, you'd use 1,000. Or if it was 1,400, you'd go ahead and go to 15. But where did they get their number from? Like I said, they had 0 0.78. There isn't even a 0 0.78 on this table right here. 
just bring this up here where we can see a little bit clearer. They don't even have a 0 0.78 right there. So where did they get 0 0.78? Well, 24 is 40% of the way between 20 and 30. So that 78 they got is 28% of the way between here and here. But it gets a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to show you. This is what we're dealing with. Now, I know this is a lot of numbers and a lot of information all at one time, but I'm going to just kind of break it down. This is that same table up here at the top, and I'm just going to use this big circle here to kind of help guide me around here and let you see where I'm at. So this big table right here is the one right off of yours. Now, like I said, using our information, we know we had a 1,200 square foot home right here. So we're at 1,200 right here. So we're not 1,000 and we're not 1,500. So we're somewhere in between these two numbers. And here you have it down here, right here, 1,000. You got 1,000 here and you got 1,500 here. 1,200 is actually 40% of the way in between these two numbers, okay? So 20% of the way in between those two numbers means the number that we're going to have is going to be in between those. So how do you get that number? How do we come up with that number that they came up with? Well, basically what they did on their example is they just split one side of it. 1,200 was closer to 1,000, so they used this column here. Now we're going for accuracy, so we're going to we're going to split the difference twice. <clears throat> Basically, and this is where they got the 0 0.78. They just dropped the two off of it. So if you just forget about the two for a minute, like I said, there you go. That's where they got their number from. They split because 24 degrees between these two up here. Like I said, you got 20 degrees up here. And you got 30 degrees right here. So we're 40% of the way in between that. So basically, they picked the number that was 40% in between there. How did they do that? Okay, this is the math over here on this side right here. So this would be the 1,000 column over here. And this would be the 1,500 column right here. Okay. So basically, the first thing you have to do is figure out how many numbers is actually in between 0 0.83 and 0 0.71. So we subtract the 0 0.71 from 0 0.83 and we get 0 0.012. Okay, 24 is 40% of the way between 20 and 30. So we're going to multiply this times 0.40. Multiply it by 0 0.40, and now we have 0 0.0048. All right, so since we came 40% of the way here, and you see the numbers are going down. In other words, it went from 0 0.83 to 0 0.71. Basically, just subtract that number that we got, this one right here. Subtract this from 0 0.83 and we get 0 0.78, same as they did. Now you could use that, but like I said, let's just be super accurate. We're gonna split the difference three times. What I did is since the house is 1200 square foot, 40% of the way in between here and here, I got a number that was 40% in between here. Let's get rid of some of these. So we're looking at this number right here. So we did the 40 between 7.1 and 8.3 and got 0 0.78. We did the 40 in between 1 and uh, 0.1 and 0 0.85. And then I picked the number that was 40% of the way in between these two numbers right here. So it's the same thing. Now you do this on all three of these first charts that you're going to do. Now, like I said, you could take the easy way out and just do the thousand and everything. But like I said, if we're trying to be accurate, let's just go ahead and be accurate. But this way, at least you know where did they pull that 0 0.78 from that's on that original page right here. So like I said, if you look at their correction factor, and I'll bring it back up. There you go, 0 0.78. You're like, where did they get 0 0.78? Because when I'm looking at this table that they're looking at, there ain't a 0 0.78. Well, it's just 40% of the way in between 0 0.83 and there. Okay? So all your numbers that are going to deal from here 
all the way across. So when we're dealing with this table here, the base case factor, the base case sensible factor, and then finally when we get over here to the base latent gain, all three of these are going to do the same thing. Whatever percentage in between this one and this one, between this one and this one, and we know 1,200 is 40% in between there, so split the difference in between those two numbers that you get. And the number that you get will be the one that you would actually use for your calculation. And it would be the most accurate. If you're doing just a quick and dirty version of this and everything like that, 1,200 is close to 1,000. Split the difference in between those and use that number. But for accurately safe, like I said, we want to do whatever percentage, like this right here. This one right here is a little bit different. We go from 90 to 95. So there's a differential of 5, and we're at 93. Well, what is 93? What is from 0 to 5? What is 3? What percentage of that is totally? And you can do this as a proportion. Like I said, I just do it the way that makes the most sense to me. Same over here with 30 to 40, there's 10 in between there. Ours is 93, so 90%. We're gonna use 90% on this number here to get in between here and here, and then 40% this way. Okay, does that make sense? Like I said, that's, and that's, that's the best way that I know of to explain where in the world did they come up with these numbers? Because when I first started doing heat load calculation and looking at these numbers, I did not know where they got this 0 0.78 because it was on no chart. I didn't realize it, you know, when you start doing the math that, you know, they were splitting the difference. But you'll end up with a number just like this. Instead of 0 0.78, you end up with 0 0.845, which we could round that up to 0 0.85. Like I said, on all my calculations, I always round to the thousandths place. So this number right here would be the actual number that we would use in that situation. So... Where do we put all this? Okay, let's get all these charts and tables and factors and numbers out of the way. We're gonna shut these down here and we're gonna go back to here. And here you go, heat loss factor. Let's get rid of this. And of course, theirs would be 0 0.78, but ours is gonna be more accurate. So let's bring up their Valtilo worksheet. Like I said, 0 0.78. And we're gonna bring back up our chart and table. And it says here, base case heat factor, BHLF, base case heat loss factor, HLF, heat loss factor. So that's the one we're going to do right there. But remember, we're going to use this special number that we actually split the difference, 40% between this number, 40% between this number, and then 40% in between this number to get us the 0 0.085 for the most accurate read on this. So right here. 0 0.085 okay uh, to make this video a little bit shorter i'm going to go ahead and stop it right there uh, but now you know how to do the sensible gain the latent gain to calculate it and uh, when we come back in the next video these will be filled in because they will be done identically to the same same way uh, i'll have the numbers up and we'll put them in here and then we're going to move down to the R value correction. On some of these calculations that you're going to do on this, you're going to run into that. You're going to run into where we have to split differences in between it. Just like down here when we get into the defa uh, default ductwork surface area, it's not 1,000 square foot. It's not 1,500 square foot. So whatever that is percentage-wise, 40%, because we already know it. We did it up here. We know we're going to have from this number to this number, 40% in between that, and this number to this number, we're going to have 40% in between there. So we have the most accurate read for what we're doing. <clears throat> Not all numbers on the charts are going to be, uh, you know, move up in a certain percentage. In other words, uh, every time it goes up an angle, move up seven, and then the next one will be 14, the next one will be 21. Some of these are going to grow exponentially, and it's going to be very difficult to figure out what the actual number is. But we're just trying to get as close as possible. If you have a calculating software, it already has all these numbers and, and algorithms in it, and it will do it for you. But just to know where it came from and how they got it, that's what we're doing. So when we come back, like I said, we'll have the number for this one here, this one here, and we're going to move on down to this actual calculation using these charts. Uh, Duckwork Lossage probably has the most charts in it, just on one page. 
and how to do it. And that's why I'm going to just break this down into multiple videos so that way, you know, we can concentrate and focus on specific things that may give us a little bit more trouble.